Welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, for the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people, projects, a division, or a business. We select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, to achieve, to succeed more effectively in business. And our webinar is just shy of an hour and we welcome your questions. Submit them via the chat window and we will answer them throughout uh, the webinar today and wrap up at the end with any additional questions that you might have. Now we have a really special and unique webinar today titled Seven Reasons You Should Visit Africa Sooner Rather Than Later Before It All Disappears. And if that doesn't intrigue you, then I don't know what would. So let me introduce our thought leader today. Kay Trotman is affectionately known as Safari Kay, and she has over 25 years of experience in the travel industry with over 15 in travel to Africa. Her specialty, you guessed it, safaris to East Africa, and specifically Tanzania. Kay's pan passion for Africa is evident as she has led over 75 groups and traveled from the U.S. to Africa more than 100 times times. She continues to lead several groups a year to this incredible wildlife and cultural experience. And Safari K is the only African-American female safari company owner in Tanzania and the only one leading her own tours. So please join me in, in welcoming Kay to the webinar and let's hear what she has to say. Take it away, Kay. Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for having me. So in, 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 oh, I'm sorry, let me just see what happened here. Okay. In Africa, one elephant is killed every 15 minutes. That's about 100 elephants killed every day just for their ivory. It's hard to believe, I understand, but it definitely is true. So for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to share with you the wonders of Africa, its wildlife, the diverse culture, and how your visit helps conservation efforts and the reasons you should visit Africa before it all disappears. So I wanted to take a moment to thank everyone for taking your time out of your busy schedule and sharing this webinar with me. And special thanks and appreciation to Patty Vargas and Michelle Berquist of Connected Women of Influence for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to share with you today. So before I share with you about the mystique of Africa, would it be okay if I shared a little bit of my, my professional story, my journey? Yes, What's please. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I worked in corporate America for almost 37 years as HR director. During that time, I also worked part-time in the travel industry. My mom passed in 2002. I was hit by a drunk driver in 2003, unable to walk or work for almost a year. My youngest brother passed suddenly in 2004, and just six months later, also in 2004, my next youngest brother died suddenly. After those deaths, my life actually was in shambles, and I just didn't really know what to do. Depressed and unable to work, I began to see a psychologist and a psychiatrist because I, I just really needed a way to move forward in my life. I, I think I needed a reason to live because I was simply living to die. And while I thought those sessions would help me, they really were just a way for me to cry and share my grief without burdening my family with my grief or friends. My life it was dark for really for those three years, but one morning I woke up you know, and I told myself it might be a good idea to change my environment, maybe take a trip somewhere to rethink my life. I'd been so depressed for so long that nothing seemed to be helping me and I just couldn't see life ahead of me. So as a longtime travel agent, I searched for available trips and there was a trip going to Tanzania. And I picked that trip, not because it was in Africa, but because really it was far away, it would operate very soon and I knew I wouldn't change my mind. And my irrational thinking at that time was the farther away I traveled, the less I would think about what was going on at home. I don't 
know how that makes any sense today, but that's how I thought then. But really, Africa chose me on that trip, and it actually saved my life. I did a lot of soul searching and discovered myself in Africa, discovered who I could be, what I could do, and areas that I never really had the opportunity to explore, you know, and what I wanted to do in the second act of my life. I didn't know how I was going to do that, but the trip itself and how the people of Tanzania treated me was really a start. So I returned home. I made the decision to retire. Once I retired, I decided to take two years and travel throughout Africa's finest safari destinations alone, the 13 African nations to see what the differences were in all of those countries. At the travel agency where I worked, I really wasn't able to agree to the conditions and restrictions to work full time for, for the office. So I needed to really quit and decide to move ahead and seek another path. So I consulted with a girlfriend who already owned a travel agency and we decided to partner together. She'd never been to Africa, but she heard me talk about it and she decided she wanted to take a trip and she wanted to promote Africa. So we did that. And when we came back, we set up a presentation for her clients and for mine. As we were greeting our guests, she went inside my home and she died on that floor of my home within five minutes after she walked in. That was a real eye-opening experience for me because it was the culmination of everything that happened in the previous years of depression and distress for me. But I knew that I needed still to move forward despite the grief that I was feeling by her death. So sometime, sometime, somehow, maybe this, I thought, may, might be a sign, you know, maybe a legacy as to how I would move forward and how I could live my life for those that I had lost. And so I, I just needed to take control of my life and research how to begin my own agency. And so that's what I did. And so in the meantime, I took groups to Tanzania um, just as a practice group to see if that was really something that they would enjoy. And so they did. And when I came back soon, I, without giving away any part of my company, I was able to partner with a local Tanzanian and I purchased a vehicle for our personalized safaris. And when I was ready to own the experience and provide a uniquely personalized and custom experience, that's when Destined to Travel opened its doors. That was 15 years ago. And today I've traveled on multiple trips of my own and led more than 75 groups to see and feel what I felt so many years ago. I really discovered a passion that I never knew, a passion that I was anxious to share <clears throat> with others. So we've been published in numerous articles and magazines and recognized and voted as the best small business uh, by Eastville Chamber of Commerce, and our testimonials speak for itself. So today I am, to my knowledge, as Patty said, the only African-American female owning her own safari company and leading her own tours. And my story, my experience has given me a unique opportunity and legacy, and my journeys and experience have become what, I, what it is today, a passion for me. And today, that's what I want to share with you. So for so many, any questions? That, do I have any questions? No, I was just going to say, what a story, man. I mean, it, it's great that you took grief and tragedy and you were able to channel it into something so positive and a way for you to give back as well, you know, through through this. So kudos to you. That's awesome. And those of you that are on the webinar with us, you know, please, I remind you, put a question in the chat, you know, if anything comes up for you as she uh, begins, as Kay leads us through the rest of this webinar. Thank you, Patty. And, and as, as I look back, I'm kind of amazed myself at the journey and how it all started, but um, I'm glad that it did. So for so many, when you say Africa, it conjures up negative images. And, you know, many believe that the entire continent really is filled with civil unrest and wars and animal attacks and danger around every corner. And they, so they've already formed opinions about Africa. And so that shows up in statements like, oh, no, I'd never go to Africa. It's just not safe. There's too many animals, you know. Honestly, the, if, if you really want to know the truth, most people don't even know where Tanzania is. And they don't know anything about it. But they, they are quoting what they hear on the news and in the media. 
But Tanzania actually has been voted the best area for wildlife viewing in all of Africa and is the safest country in the region. So from your arrival to your departure, both my, get, my driver and myself will be with you, watching over you, watching over the group. And we want to debunk some of those myths that you hear in the media. So that is our focus and that's what we're going to try to do. And I'll share a little bit about that in the presentation. So let's explore, you know, and we'll do it in the form of uh, acronym, SAFARIS, S-A-F-A-R-I-S, why you should visit Africa sooner rather than later before it all disappears. So S for safety and security. Tanzania is a republic, the United Republic of Tanzania. And it's located below the equator, right below Kenya. And it's very temperate. In fact, its weather patterns are similar to California, except it never gets as hot in this part of Africa as it does in California. In all the years that I've traveled, it has never been more than about 85 or 88 degrees. Beautiful. So your safety is our main concern. We go over the rules every day. We talk to you about the animals. We, we have never experienced you know, any political activity or civil unrest in the last 15 years, no civil wars. And I don't believe that they're allowed to protest there. We talk to you about where we're staying, what's safe and what is not safe. So you will, be, you will feel very safe. And most of my guests who come do, I always ask them if there's any part of the trip where they felt unsafe and the answer is a resounding no. So we do strive to make sure that you feel safe. The A for safaris, A is for animals, the big five and more. It's very important, you know, this actually encompasses everything that I would talk about because honestly, if this disappears, the other reasons, there's no reason to go. So going sooner rather than later means that you'll miss the highways going through the wildlife areas, which they are starting to do now. You'll miss oil drilling and mineral mining soon to come, and some of it, I believe, is, is being started. You'll miss baby animals being stolen from their moms to take as pets for royalty and to put in zoos in other countries. This is definitely going on. You'll miss animals being poached to the max. Right now, there's no tourists over there. Poachers can go wild, basically, because nobody's watching them. Now, the tourists have started to come, which means that poachers will probably come out at nighttime. But it is happening. It's happening or it's coming. So isn't that a clear reason why you should go sooner rather than later? Because otherwise, you'll be reading about this in a book. Just like we read about dinosaurs, you'll be reading about elephants or rhinos and other animals, you know, that once roamed the earth, once roamed Africa. So these are the big five. And the big five were uh, identified back in the big game hunting days for the most five, for the five biggest, most dangerous animals to hunt on foot. You have the Cape buffalo, the rhino, the elephant, the leopard, and the lion. Now, today, those animals, because there's, there is still hunting, but it's not big game hunting the way it used to be, but there is hunting there, so I don't want to mislead you. There's hunting in different parts of Africa, and there's different controls and different rules in different countries. Today, these five are known for the five most popular and the biggest animals that are the most difficult to see on safari and also the most dangerous. Now, you will always see buffalo. You rarely will see a rhino, but we do strive to make that happen. You, may, you will see elephants, but remember what I said at the beginning, that one elephant is killed every 15 minutes, so count your blessings when you see elephants. Leopards are very elusive. We have difficulty finding them, but we've been able to do that. And lions, you definitely will see. And you will see over 100 species of birds maybe on any one safari but there's about 400 species of birds throughout Tanzania and actually in every African country. So F is for food, food. So from your moderate luxury to luxury to ultra luxury, uh, to from buffet to sit down to individual vegetarian, vegan or gluten-free, some African dishes, you will enjoy it. You, it Africa has some wonderful, wonderful dishes and they're all cooked with an African flavor and they're not all necessarily African dishes. You will recognize what you eat, obviously, 
Um, and we will at some places have some African dishes. As on the, on the right, you'll see what kind of menu sometimes that you might have. This one is named for my group, Karina. That's my real name. And the, I mean, look at that. That will rival any five or six star restaurant that you go to anywhere in the world. Mm. And their, their veggies are very fresh because most of them grow their own or they share between properties. So your, your veggies are always fresh. They don't use pesticides. Um, and the, the top one, both of the ones on the right are hamburgers, you know? So, I mean, that's a staple. It's a staple for us and it's a staple for them, you know? And so they make, they make it and it's really, 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 really good. So, um, so you will be eating things that you know and things that you enjoy, and you'll be eating new dishes as well. And of course, your desserts. I mean, you could just look at them and, and say, oh my God, <laughs> you know? And so for me, what I normally do is because I, I love desserts, but um, I can just eat and eat and eat. So sometimes I'll get up from the table after I take a bite because I just have to taste it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Those are beautiful. They do. They look like a five-star restaurant meal. Yeah, very. The presentation will, almost anything they serve will make you want to eat it. <laughs> wow. So accommodations for A, so from moderate three to four star to upscale five star to ultra six star and above, and yes, they have plenty of those. Um, those are the, those are the accommodations, and we, normally what I do is I have a mix of accommodations during any one trip. So for May 2022, for some of you who've heard me promoting this, they're going to be using some luxury properties and with one four star, and I'm going to show you those. Check out those in just the next slide. Okay, so if you look, you will see that uh, the one on the left, that's a four star property. Okay, that is the only four star property that we will be using on that trip. And I use that because it's the closest to the airport. It's a vintage property, it's very nice. You really enjoy it. And it has an animal sanctuary on it. No predators, but you'll see water birds, water buffalo, you'll see zebra, you'll see donkey, you'll see some other things on there, you know, and peacocks and, you know, they'll just entertain you. So that's, that would be our first property. And the second property, well, you see the two in the center. You see with the bathtub in the living room yeah. and, and the beautiful um, chandelier over the bed. That is a tented camp, ladies and gentlemen, a tented camp. So I hear a lot of people say, oh, gosh, I'd never stay in a tent. Now, if you went all the way to Africa and you said you'd never stay in a tent and you had to stay in here, would you not stay? <laughs> I, th I think you would. <laughs> I think you would, because this is really the place that you would be. And this is actually a brand new property. I have not stayed there yet, but I am going to stay there if I go in November. Um, they've invited me to see all of their properties, in fact, and so I'm going to see there. So it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I'm sure that the experience there, because I know where it's located, would be just as nice. Right. And right underneath there, you'll see a pool, and that will be another property. And to the very bottom right where you see the beds, that is actually the room in that, in that property. And then you'll see uh, one with curtains and one overlooking the pool. Okay, tell us a little bit more about these properties here. Okay, so you, you'll see this area here. I think I might have mentioned this is um, the Malia, which is a, a big chain in Mexico and Spain. And they actually built, just recently built a property in the Serengeti. So the pool, if you're at the pool, you're overlooking the Serengeti, likely to see any animals around here. And uh, this is the room at that property. Mm -hmm. This property here and this room actually go together. They're just out of order. So this is a beautiful property. You can walk around. The gardens are absolutely beautiful. All the rooms look pretty much the same. So this is a wonderful property as well. And then our last night, we would stay here. This is called Acacia Lodge. It's built on a coffee plantation. And this is your pool. This is your lobby area. And there's a deck out here where it, it overlooks the plantation. And this is your room. So very nice properties, extremely nice. These are all five-star properties. This is a four-star property, the very first one. So I believe everyone will love where they stay. And that's important. This, this was a shock to me that this was the, 
this was what the accommodations look like. <laughs> yeah, for most people, because I think they're thinking you're sleeping on the ground and you're doing some other things. So, you know, we're, we're not doing that at all. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can advance because now I'm not able to advance here. Um, I, did I do that or did you do that? You did that. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know exactly what is going on here. So, okay. so see if you can put it back in slideshow. Okay. Note from current slide. Yeah, there you go. And now we're look. Oh, okay. All right. So I think we're at the R for <laughs> the F A R religion, and religion combines both uh, the community and the culture because they all kind of go together in Tanzania. So you have the local tribe, which is the Maasai, and they have their own religion and their own culture, and they really dominate the area in their red and blue shukas. Their blanket that they wrap around them is called a shuka, and what their money is uh, cattle. So cattle is like money in the bank to them. So they rely on cattle, meat, the meat, the milk, and blood from the cattle because they don't really eat anything else. That's what they eat. Mm. And religion and culture overlap in the communities as well because you see people together living in harmony if they're you know, Muslim or they go to a mosque, a church, or a temple. So it, it's a very unique uh, culture. And the population of Tanzania is somewhere around 57 million. And approximately 60% of that is, 60% of Tanzania's population are Christians, 35% Muslims, and 5% other. And Tanzania encompasses Zanzibar, which is an island off the coast of Tanzania. It is, it is in Zanzibar. I'm sorry, it is in Tanzania. It's part of Tanzania. So that encompasses that population as well. So religion is a big thing in Tanzania. And because they all combine and live together, you bring together the community and the culture. And so it's very diverse. And you see the, the red and blue shukas. These are two of my guests. They're actually not Maasai. They're Maasai for a day. <laughs> and you see the red and blue shukas that they wear. And you will see them all over town walking um, because they walk. That's what they do. They, they don't really have cars. They might ride a bike, but they do walk a lot of, lot of places. And our community support program is again, it encompasses the community. And this is our nonprofit and this is our Make a Difference Safari, which I'll explain in a few minutes uh, briefly. But, but all of the guests get a chance to visit with the community support program called Leaders of Tomorrow Children's Home. Mm. So it, I is for inspiration because Tanzania's people are authentically genuine, warm, and welcoming. Some places you go, People are friendly to you because you're a tourist, but in Tanzania, they are friendly to you, period. They will help you. They will go out of their way to, to do something for you. Um, and while it's really considered a third world country, you can't help but notice the smiles on everyone's faces. I mean, it's rich in culture um, from the beginnings to the, to the experiences today. It's diverse, it's new, and it's old, and it's all blended together. Its wildlife uh, is prolific. And Tanzania, as I mentioned, is noted for their wildlife and the, one of the greatest viewing, uh, wildlife viewing areas in all of Africa. And so a portion of your safari costs contributes towards keeping the parks pristine, conserving the wildlife and protecting the environment. No visitors, wildlife declines. Visitors, while all the more eyes you have on everything, you know, the poachers, it keeps the poachers out. So it's very important. Tourism is very important to Tanzania and to most African countries. Um, so we also, our company helps donate portions to cons conservation as well. And a part of our proceeds also go to the children's home. So your visit actually helps in so, so many ways. It's not just a safari. This is a cultural experience, but the wildlife is a plus for you. So Tanzania is represented by the colors of the flag. Um, it's rich in minerals and that's represented by yellow. It's generous in water and it's really beautiful. Lots of lakes and oceans is represented by the blue. The amazing vegetation and the soil you, it, that they grow these veggies in is just unbelievable. And that's represented by green and black represents the Swahili people who are native to Tanzania. Mm. So the S for safaris. So we offer two different types of safaris. Our regular wildlife safari viewing safari, 
comprises three to four different parks, depending upon whether you're there nine nights, eight nights, or 10 nights. If you're there for nine nights or 10 nights, you will see four different parks. You'll see the UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is the crater, Karangiri National Park, which is known for its elephants, Manyara National Park, known, known for its primates and its tree climbing lions. The Gorongoro Crater has a little bit of everything as well as the Great Serengeti. So those are the, those are the parks on the circuit that most people will do. There are lots of other parks in Africa, but this is your main park. This is your main park that encompasses all of the wildlife 12 months out of the year in different areas because Tanzania is seasonal. Uh, you do make a local tribe visit. You, you also visit our community support pro program, which we bring together Americans to share their skills, talents, professions with the children of our leaders of tomorrow children's home. There are 28 disadvantaged children who reside there and whose education tuition is paid through the guests of my company, Destined to Travel. So it is a great experience and many people, and we, our Make a Difference group actually stays with the children for a few nights and then they go on a brief safari, whereas the regular safari don't stay there, but they do get to meet the children. We do go and visit there. So that's the difference in the two. And of course, shopping. Everybody likes to go shopping, but there are, I know there are a lot, of, a lot of people who say, well, you know, we're not going there to go shopping. But honestly, I'm gonna take you shopping because there will be things that you will want to buy. You are in, a, in Africa. You're gonna want to buy something that represents Africa, whether it's a Tanzanite ring or whether it's a little trinket, you're going to want to buy something. I've never known anybody to leave without one bag, minimum one. Most have about 20. <laughs> So, uh, for instance, here's the Tanzanite, only mined in Tanzania, uh, and these are scarves. Uh, so you can purchase Tanzanite in the United States, it's more expensive, and it's getting to be more expensive in Tanzania because they're running out of Tanzanite. So people buy the stones because they know the price is going to increase. So Tanzanite is, is almost a must for everybody. Almost everybody leaves with at least a Tanzanite earrings or just a stone or a ring or something. Art is very, very uh, known throughout Tanzania. I say everybody in Tanzania is an artist because there's art everywhere. Little stores, big stores, you know, any kind of souvenir shop, there's art everywhere. Beautiful art, beautiful art. And we actually take you to, to an art gallery also for you to look and it has some beautiful artifacts and beautiful art. Mm -hmm. We also ask everyone to buy a bracelet, five or $10 bracelet. Maybe you can get it for $3, but any kind of a bracelet because this is our signature unity picture. So everybody bought a bracelet and because, you know, we take all ethnicities, we come together as one on safari. It is a great bonding experience and we will take a picture before everybody leaves. And few months later, you're not, I'm not sure that you can recognize your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our, 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 our unity picture. So Karibu means welcome. And so let's just recap. Safety and security. You travel because it's safe. The country is safe. Animals. You travel to see the wildlife and understand the urgency of now. If you don't have A, you don't have anything else because there won't be any reason for you to go, you know. And when that happens, I will no longer be escorting safaris. So that's why I say, because I can see the difference between now and 10 years ago and 20 years ago. So you need A in order to experience all of the other things. So food, you know the food's going to be okay to eat because I've not had anybody get sick. Uh, the accommoda And it's great, you know, and it's always great. And the accommodations, you've seen a little bit of the accommodation, so you know you're going to experience African living safely. The religion, you're going to learn about the tribes and the makeup of the country. You're going to be inspired by what you see and what you learn. And of course, you're going to have fun doing it. So that's S-A-F-A-R-I-S, -A -A ladies and gentlemen. Safaris for the seven reasons. Wow. So the takeaways that I want you to have from this presentation is that Tanzania is a safe country. The urgency of now, the accommodations, even the tents, are safe. And that is what I wanted to share with you today. 
So if you've been inspired by anything that you've heard or seen today and you would like to join us on our virtual safari, which is on Friday the 31st, put the link, put, I didn't put the link in the chat box, but put your name in there. I will make sure you get the link. And also, if you might be interested in joining us on a future safari, please put that in there as well. I really enjoyed sharing with you. I know we had a, a, a glitch, but I think we covered everything and hopefully you got something out of it. And just remember that one trip can truly change your life and the lives of others. It actually changed my life and I hope it will leave an impact on yours as well. So yeah. thank you so much for the opportunity. Okay, this has been so fascinating and, and so interesting. And, and uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we did just a dry run with this together, I was so inspired. I've told everybody that, you know, that I could think of, you need to really come to this webinar because it's not anything that you could have imagined. It was nothing that I would have imagined. And yeah, and the, I mean, this is the, the love and the wonderful time of being on virtual everything, where everything is great as long as your electricity and your internet. <laughs> well, we got through it. <laughs> yeah, so somewhere there in the middle, we had a little bit of a problem, but I think that we recovered and, and we will end up having one big, beautiful recording, you know, when this is all over. But there, there actually are a couple questions for you, Kay, if, if okay, you've got right. a couple minutes. So one was, was around the area of conservation. So, you know, knowing that um, that the animals are, you know, are endangered and, you know, possibly will disappear in some time. It, does Tanzania have a conservation program, number one? And number two, is it illegal to big game hunt there? Okay, a couple of, couple of things. First of all, yes, Tanzania has a lot, a lot of conservation uh, programs. They have one for cheetah, leopard. When you're on safari, you will see leopards that have collar on them. Uh, or lions that have a collar, or elephants that have a collar. And that means that there is a study going on, uh, a conservation study, because they're trying to monitor to see, you know, what happens to those animals, what areas they go into, um, is there some way that they can control that. So there are lots of different uh, conservation projects that take place in the Serengeti and in other parks as well. So yes to that answer. With regard to is it illegal, it is not illegal. Um, in fact, most African countries actually have hunting simply because hunting brings in a lot, a lot of money. Mm. Now, I, I, I'm not a you know, proponent of hunting, especially trophy hunting. I, I do understand the principle behind some hunting efforts. You know, when you have a community that um, is starving, um, and what they do is they have it controlled so that maybe the hunters can come in and they could, they could hunt the older animals who are in danger of dying because, you know, they know how long the animals live. And pretty easy to tell how old the animals are. So they do have some controls on hunting in most of the areas. But you also have illegal hunting, you know, people who actually sneak onto the property if they can poachers who, who are paid big time money from people in Asia who want the ivory of the elephants. So it almost doesn't matter. I don't think, I think it's very difficult to control. And they've had so many different programs to try to combat uh, hunting and trophy hunting and I'm sorry, illegal hunting mm -hmm. uh, that nothing has truly worked so they put in a lot of these conservation programs in order to try to see what they can do to help the animals and you know every country has its own challenges as far as hunting mm -hmm. and um you know it's not it's not something i really enjoy talking about but what i do enjoy is that people understand and know that this is happening because this is the reason why you would want to go sooner rather than later. And I feel very bad for, for when I see elephants, I see huge herds of elephants. And I know that because their tusk is three feet long, that somebody's going to want that tusk. Yeah. And that makes me upset. And that makes me very sad, mm -hmm. you know. So yes, there is legal hunting 
in many African countries, and some of the ones where it's been prohibited for years have now started again. And this, I'm sure, is because it brings in big bucks. Mm, that's, that's a shame. Yes, yes. What about the Tanzania? Is that is that a finite resource, or are they going to do additional mining to try to uncover more? Or um... I think uh, Tanzanite has probably run its course. There's only certain Tanzanite mines, and I, I just read the other day <clears throat> that someone discovered a huge piece of tanzanite you know when they they thought the tanzanite was disappearing but somebody discovered a huge piece now i don't know how i don't know if that piece was missed or if there's suddenly going to be more that appear but from everything that i've heard there really is only maybe about five years left of mining for tanzanite but that doesn't mean, you know, that maybe they haven't uncovered everything. I, I don't know. You know, like in China, when they uncovered the terracotta soldiers, you know, after hundreds of years. So maybe somebody will find another mine because the mines are below the ground. Yeah. And so I don't know what exists there. But this is, this is what everyone is saying is that Tanzanite over the next five years will probably be very limited, at least in the size of the stones. They might find little small stones, but it's for the size of the bigger stones to really make something big um, that it's disappearing. Wow. So when do you think that you're going to be able to travel again? I know you're, you're doing these virtual safaris to kind of give everyone a glimpse of, of what it's like, um, but when do you expect to travel again, physically travel? So realistically, I, I have a ticket to go to Tanzania in November. Now, I did have a group in November, but they've decided that they wanted to postpone because of the European ban as well, because they were also going to go to Europe. So they decided to postpone until next year, November. And I need to take care of business in November before my next group in April. Mm -hmm. So I plan to go in November. I am in touch with Tanzania. I am not as worried about what's happening in Tanzania as I am here. <laughs> Because here is, you know, every day there's something new. There, their hospitals are not overrun. I don't know that anybody truly knows the numbers because I don't think that they're really publishing them. But what I go by is the hospitals and the people that I know on the ground who can give me information. So my plan is to still travel in November as of today. <laughs> wow. 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 Well, that's, that's amazing. So before we end today, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the virtual safari on July 31st, so we can make sure everybody gets all the details about that. Okay. Um, the virtual safari is going to be a longer safari. What I told you today is some reasons why and the things that you would do. On the virtual safari, we're actually going to be like we're going on safari. So you're going to see what I have seen and what my groups have seen on a safari. So we're going to take 10 days, compile it down to one hour, and you're going to see some of what you see on safari, what you do on safari, what you're going to experience on safari. Sundowners. Um, sundowners is, is being out in the Serengeti, having a drink, watching the sun go down. You're going to be seeing animals that you've never seen before. You're going to be seeing uh, videos of animals that, um, that you've never actually seen um, before. So, so I'm sorry. So uh, we're going to be doing that as well. So we're going to be actually going on safari. And during that time, uh, you'll be able to ask questions and you'll just see what we see on safari. So I, I'm, I'm excited for it because we're going to see some exciting things and you're gonna get a chance to hopefully be excited on your armchair safari. So I'll be in my armchair and you'll be in yours. From the comfort of your home, you'll be able to take a virtual safari. That's awesome. So if they haven't seen this on social media, they can find you on social media as Safari K and they can email you here at safarikafrica at gmail.com. And uh, I, think, I think it's gonna be beautiful. I think it's gonna be fantastic. So 
I wanted to thank you, Kay, so much for spending so much time with us, for being so patient through, you know, some of our little technical glitches here. And for those of you who stuck with us through it, thank you as well. And, and I also want to thank the people that will be listening to this in the replay. Um, if you happen to listen to this recording after July 31st, still reach out to Kay because she has more of these virtual safaris coming up and it's it's just not going to be uh, anything that you want to miss out on you're gonna want to make sure that you take every every opportunity here so if there are no other questions i'm checking our chat box i don't see anything here so um, again thank you so much kay for all your time thank you to those of you who joined with us and i look forward to the next time that i see all of you here on another women lead webinar thanks so much thank you patty bye now thank you everyone bye <laughs>